Today we are converting this IKEA Millsbow cabinet into a greenhouse. Yay! Hey everyone, how's it going? I have Danielle here with me today as well. Hey! To start this project off, let's get building the main portion of this project, the IKEA Millsbow cabinet. So if you've been around the channel for a while, you might remember my other greenhouse cabinet that we built out of an IKEA de Tolf about two years ago. Has it been two years? I don't know. I threw a number out there. Are they going to check? Oh, for, well, I only put the video out like six months ago. That means that. nothing. The de Tolf video was more of an overview of what we did, whereas this one is going to be a little bit more of a detailed, in-depth setup. So over the years thinking about what I want to do with my plant collection, I've looked at quite a few different videos on YouTube about how to set up greenhouse cabinets. And I found a lot of them focus very heavily on the plant side of things and not so much on the construction and how to put the actual greenhouse together. So I'm hoping this video will help answer some of the questions I had when I was setting up my IKEA greenhouse. So with the cabinet now assembled, let's get into the extras. The heart of the greenhouse is this Ultralink smart home Wi-Fi power bar and surge protector. Each of the outlets and USB ports are individually controlled and programmed through an app. I have a matching power bar that we bought. Actually, I didn't buy it. It was John's and I stole it for the DeTolf. So now I have one app that controls both my greenhouse cabinets, which is very useful. Right on your phone. Right on my phone. I would have preferred to have the power bar on the top of the greenhouse. However, the cable wasn't quite long enough. Not tall enough. So underneath it is. We will have to drill a hole in the bottom of the cabinet to allow for cable pass through, but more on that later. For the lighting, we picked up two of these two foot LED full spectrum grow lights from Fiat Electric. The top one was easy to mount on the roof of the cabinet with these magnetic hooks that we could just loop through the hangers of the lights and stick them on. The cord on the light was not long enough for us to reach our power bar, so we used this little piece of extender that came with it essentially to link the light bars together to give us that extra six inches of length so that when we drill a hole in the bottom we can actually plug into the power bar. The second light however will need to wait until the center shelf is installed so let's jump into that. To install a center shelf that allows for more airflow through the entire cabinet we decided to go with this basic builder white wire shelving as it's cheap Cheaper if you pick it up used at a restore or other home reuse center type of place. And it's relatively easy to cut. You could just do it this way. And you'll eventually be able to cut through it. I have an angle grinder, so I'm going to do it this way and it'll take a lot less time, just a lot more noise and a lot more sparks. So because I can't really get to this piece with it clamped this way, I'm going to cut it here as well just to make a little bit more space and then I can get to this piece down here and be able to cut a little bit better. There we go. So since the angle grinder would have left everything a little bit sharp, um, it would have done the same thing with a hacksaw, just not as violent, but it did leave quite a sharp edge right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the file and just kind of round over the edges here just to keep it, you know, from scratching the glass, cutting Danielle open, stuff like that. Ouch. And if you are using the angle grinder, these will be hot. I'm not that worried about it right now. As soon as you're done with them, they will be hot. They'll cool off. Unfortunately, my measuring tape didn't do its job properly, probably because my cat likes to chew on them when I'm trying to work, and it ended up being a little bit too narrow left to right. If I didn't cut this too short, then it would have fit there just fine. Thanks, Aries. However, it was also slightly too short front to back as well, which that one I can't really blame the cat for. To get around this issue, I figured that I would use the wall brackets that the shelf came with to build shelf support to fit onto the sides of the greenhouse cabinet. No, they weren't the wall brackets. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. They were the things inside for the other shelves. Do you want to go look right now? You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's that metal piece that uh, would be bolted to the wall underneath and then the 45 to hold the front of the shelf up. That's what we used? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Well, I'm describing how I did it. <laughs> oh, I'll have to watch this video. I cut the ends of the brackets off and cut the remaining pieces to the same length as the depth of the cabinet broke out the hammer and took out some frustrations to pound the brackets flat. Blacksmith must be... Blacks... Blacksmith... Blacksmith must be... 
blacksmiths must be like the most the like, zen people because all they do is just smash things all day you'd think welders would be in the same category though and your brother is definitely not zen no <laughs> <laughs> that's true with the brackets now pounded into flat bar, I can lop off the corners to have them fit perfectly into the sides of the cabinet and wire shelving can sit right on top of that. Now that the center shelf is installed, I can now install the second light, which for simplicity is just zip tied to the underside of the shelf and then plugged into the power bar. So lighting is up. Top light, we use these magnetic hooks since the mill's bow's magnetic. As we said, we use the extender to give us the little extra oomph. Second row of lights, just zip tied to the wire shelf we installed. The rest of the electrical will get done later, but we're getting there. With the lighting and shelving figured out, I figured I would start on the ventilation system. This is probably the biggest DIY portion of this project, but saying that, it really isn't that complicated. Using a couple of these small suction cups with hooks on them, or sticky hookies, I'm hanging these 120 millimeter desktop PC fans on the side of the cabinet with these little clear plastic bumpers on them to keep the fans off the glass. For now I'm just setting them up to figure out their final-ish position before I start figuring out wiring since, you know, they kinda need to spin to be useful. Once Danielle more or less figured out where she wanted the fans, I can start customizing them. I decided to leave as much wire on the fans themselves as I could, so I looped together as much of the wire as I could and twist tied it together. Then I broke out the wire strippers and clipped off the factory end to plug it into a computer. Which, yes, makes these useless for a PC case application. I probably could have figured out a connector to fit it if I wanted to spend another hundred bucks or so in tools and kits to make custom terminations, but I figured that it wasn't worth the cost at this point. Though I did consider it. Maybe next time. I just realized we're both wearing plaid. Yeah. We've been married too long. I always wear plaid. We've started to look alike. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the wire stripper's smallest cutter was too big for these wires, so I broke out my EDC knife and cut the insulation off that way. I will only need the positive and negative lines for my purposes, but right now I don't know which ones those are, so I will just clear off all three of the lines. To run the fans, I'm going to use this universal power supply set to 12 volt with the DC LED terminal connector. With some test lines screwed into the terminal, I can test out each line on the fan until it spins the way I want it to and make sure I keep track of which wire is which, and get rid of that third that I'm not going to need. It's not like the ground line is ever useful anyway. Joke just to piss off the electricians. Mm -hmm. With the wires mapped, I start unspooling and figuring out how much cabling I'm going to need and cutting it all to length. I'm using 18 gauge wire for no particular reason other than it being the smallest gauge I saw at Princess Auto. And I'm cheap. Next up is to solder the extension wires onto the fan wires, starting with running the heat shrink tubing onto the end of the cable before you solder the wires together since you won't be able to do it afterward. I guess you could technically do it from the other end if you didn't do that, but that's kind of a pain in the ass and it's not always possible. So just do it first and then you won't have to worry. With the heat shrinking run, I twist the two wires together to hold them into place and once the soldering iron is hot, you can melt some solder onto it and feed it into the copper wire where it will more or less wick into the cable and connect the two wires together. Remember how I said to add the heat shrink tubing first? Make sure you wait until the connection actually cools off before you try and cover it with the heat shrink. Otherwise you'll get it about halfway onto the joint and it'll shrink and then you're kind of screwed. Ask me how I know. Once the connection is cooled down however, just center the heat shrink over the connection and just use a little Bic lighter to quickly blast it with some heat and close in the connection. So basically, I'm just going to do the same thing to the rest of them now, but you don't need to see all of them. So I'm going to stop the camera for now. Okay, so I forgot to hit record for a little bit of that. Basically, the only thing that you really missed was me drilling the hole here, which I basically just did with the step bit. Started it up here, but then I had to come in from underneath and do the bottom side. It was a little bit more of a pain. What I probably should have done is if I knew where the hole was to begin with, I should have drilled this while I was building the cabinet, but I didn't decide the location of this until five minutes ago, so I had to wait on that. And then what I also did is start stringing up the cables alongside the corner of the cabinet. And how I'm doing that is I'm basically just using these cable ties. There's one that isn't being used at the moment. 
And I'm using the same type of hardware that the IKEA cabinet uses already. These are 832 threaded machine screws. And they do fit right into these holes already. Uh, that would be technically used for the um, original glass shelves that would be in there before. But seeing as how we're not using that, the holes are all still available. So that's where these come in. So I'm going to finish tying up this corner and then the shelf wiring or the fan wiring is pretty much done other than terminating it and plugging it into the power bar. With all of the cables now routed, I have to more or less repeat the process to figure out which cables are positive and negative. But seeing as how I did that once already, it's easy enough. Especially now that the ground wire is cut off and removed because it basically reduced the amount that I needed by 30%. Once I have them figured out, I solder all of the positives into one cable, all the negatives into another, heat shrinking them the same way as before, and now I can finally screw them into the terminal and plug them into the power bar. Fans are done. To better show off the accent wall we painted behind the greenhouse, as well as to make sure that this greenhouse is a little more water resistant than the Detolf, I found these wire grates on Amazon we installed. Very bottom of the bottom pegboard. It might not show up on camera all that well, but you can see a little bit just on, see if I can point to it, this one and this one. There's a little bit of water damage where the water's gotten inside the MDF or particle board, whatever it is in there, and it's starting to swell a little bit. Using the same hardware that would have held up the original glass shelves for the cabinet, I was able to more or less clamp the grate into place. In the areas where the hardware wouldn't work, I used the same cable ties I used for the fans to hook around the grate itself and screw them into the side. At this point, the greenhouse was substantially set up and I was able to start putting some of my plants in so that we could start figuring out any of the little tweaks that we still wanted to make before calling this project done. One of the first things I noticed was the humidity levels. I had hoped that just having the plants in there with their watered pots would keep the humidity high enough, but I decided I wanted it to be a little higher. I also didn't want to have the foggy greenhouse look that some people go for when they add an actual humidifier in. So instead I opted to put in a small fountain that I just found on Amazon and let that just add that extra moisture to the air. To help keep the humidity within the greenhouse, we also opted to install some peel and stick weather stripping. We use this silicone strip along the seam of the two doors and then this D-style type along the other three sides of the doors, basically just to seal around the door itself as the rest of the cabinet was pretty sealed up. One of the other issues we found is some of the plants that I sat on these hanging shelves would slide off if the door was closed too abruptly. It did actually happen one day shortly after I set up the fountain and it ended up falling on the fountain, shattering the fountain, and Mr. Shrine over here had to glue it back together for me one day after I purchased it. Yep. So there's the fountain that we broke. Basically this bottom shelf tier, whatever, was snapped completely out of the plastic retention thing down there. So what I ended up doing was basically just welding it back on with some CA glue. So hopefully that's at the right orientation that it isn't going to be dripping water off the edge of the fountain, but I guess we'll find out. Probably could have just returned it to Amazon saying, oh, broken shipping, I don't know. But, you know, that's kind of a dick move, so. And you like to fix things. And I like to fix things. So once the fountain was actually, you know, reassembled and glued back together, we figured out a way to actually prevent that from happening in the future. So since one of the issue was that pots were basically just sliding off the golden shelves here, like right down this way, what I'm doing is I'm just using the self, uh, uh, self-centering drill bit here. And I'm just drilling in right on the seam of the pot here, just to give like a 1 8 inch diameter hole that we can hook an S hook into, just to kind of hook it in and then hook it onto the shelf. So we've done that on this one already, so that'll work pretty well. I guess it's a good way of doing just some hanging pots too, if you wanted to do just that right, right off the grate as well. So could you do that? There we go. No one's going anywhere. Now we can close it. Without anyone falling off. Perfect. 
One of the last things I wanted to do is this was kind of a birthday present to myself, so I wanted to jazz this cabinet up. I decided to invest in some fancier handles, so I found these 3D printed Alocasia Frydeck handles on Etsy and ordered them, and it was great because they literally just slid over the existing Millsbo handles. No muss, no fuss, no having to order extra parts to get them installed. And because they just slip on right on top, I steal them every so often just to be annoying. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun for me. And with that, this project is pretty much done. Woo! Other than a couple inevitable reorganizations that uh, Danielle will most likely do at any given point. Weekly. Weekly. It's pretty much done. Overall, we're pretty happy with how this project worked out, and it is a definite improvement overall to this room, particularly since this was the project that spawned the whole room redesign anyway. Love you. I decided to track the costs of this project while we were going to make sure we didn't go too overboard because scope creep is a real issue in this house. Um, the prices shown are in Canadian dollars since that's where we live. I feel like we did a pretty decent job building this on a budget by cutting out some things like not buying fancy pre-done circulation fans and then using the computer fans and having John finagle those together himself. If you're looking to replicate this project, hopefully this will help give you an idea of where to start and roughly how much it could end up costing you. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what we're doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to checking them out in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow us on Instagram, at dschreiner photography for Danielle and John the Shriner for myself. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video, and have a good one. Bye guys. Today we are converting this Ikea. You gotta restart, I scratched my nose. <laughs> well, this would have been covered anyway. <laughs> Today, today we are convert. <laughs> what? You're making noise. I'm just you're here. creaking the chair and then you're going. <laughs> what do you want from me? Just let me finish the first line. <laughs> nah. Today we are converting this Ikea Millsbo cabinet into a greenhouse. Yay. <laughs> sure. I'll put that in. <laughs> Alright. Good. No. Mama hot mess. <laughs> I don't do recording much. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> Unfortunately, my measuring tape didn't do its job properly. 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 What are you doing? Where's Aries? I don't know. I want him. Okay. And then plugged into the power bar. You could talk slower. No. You could. You always say I talk so goddamn yeah, slow. Yeah, whenever you're talking to me and then you talk to these like <laughs> blah, 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 but your stories <coughs> take like 45 minutes to get past the intro. And if I wrote all of my stories and read them, they would be fast. Find a middle lane. No. <laughs> Remember how I said to add the heat shrink first? What are you doing? I'm gonna braid your Don't hair. braid my hair. <laughs> Why not? Now I just have to repeat that process through the rest of the fans and route all of the cables. <laughs> Thank you for waiting until I finish the sentence. You're wrong. I tried really hard.